Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use a powerful percents and ratio math trick to answer a really tricky data sufficiency question really quickly and really easily. Also, just for being here, I have a free gift for you. Three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the same strategies I teach all of my private students. They're really effective, it's gonna help you a lot, and it's free, you can download it right in the description. Okay, let's jump into that example. Okay, quick strategy review. Whenever you're in a percent or ratio data sufficiency question, your job is to get all of the variables to cross off because if you can't get all the variables to cross off, we don't know exactly what the value of that ratio is it's insufficient. But if we can get all the variables to cross off, then we do know the exact value of that ratio or percent, so it is sufficient. Example number two may look very familiar to those of you who have already done example number one, but everything in the GMAT, the devil's always in the details. Clyde buys and sells used records online. He recently purchased a Mint Condition Beatles album and a Mint Condition Marvin Gaye album. He sold both a week later. How much greater was his profit from selling the Beatles album than selling the Marvin Gaye album? Okay, what we always do is figure out what we've been asked for and write it down. In this case, we have want the profit of the Beatles over the profit of Marvin Gaye. Now, profit, we know, is revenue minus cost. So what we've actually been asked for is the Beatles revenue minus the Beatles cost over the Marvin Gaye revenue minus the Marvin Gaye cost to put that even like more mathy. What we've really been asked for is BR minus BC over MR minus MC. So what we do always in these ratio questions is we translate each statement out of English into math. And our goal is to then use that information and see if we can get all the variables to cross off. If we can, then that statement is sufficient. So let's see what we get. Statement one, Clyde paid 10% more for the Beatles album. In math, that means BC equals 1.1 MC. Is that gonna be enough information to get all the variables to cancel out? No way, we don't have any information about revenue. Statement number two, Clyde sold the Beatles album for 10% more than the Marvin Gaye album. In math, that means BR equals 1.1 MR. Is that gonna be enough information? No way, statement two alone gives us no information um, about, the, uh, about the cost, so that's insufficient. What if we combine them? If we combine and substitute, what we get, BR minus BC over MR minus MC, we can substitute that in for 1.1 MR minus 1.1 MC on the top over MR minus MC then we can actually factor out the 1.1 and we get MR 1.1 times MR minus MC on the top over MR minus MC on the bottom. Guess what happens to the MR minus MCs? Yep, they cancel out. That is sufficient. Very nicely done. The answer, by the way, would be C. Okay, so I know what some of you are thinking. Really, all I have to do is substitute in and see if all the variables cross off, that's it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because remember in data sufficiency, you're not being asked to actually solve for the value. We don't care what the actual value is. We just care that we could calculate it. So I want you to use this strategy whenever you're solving for a percent ratio or fraction on a data sufficiency question. First, get everything out of English and into math. Sometimes that's the tricky part. Then plug in and then do your algebra. If all the variables cancel, then that statement is sufficient. Okay, great job. That's how it works. If you found this video helpful, please remember to hit like or subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And don't forget about your free gift, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. It's yours for free. You can download it right in the description. Okay, great job. We'll see you next time.